Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today we have another of our series of 10 basic upcycling skills and today we're talking about stitches, basic stitches. The stitches that are gonna get you upcycling fast. The stitches that I use on a daily basis and have for many, many years. So all these sewing machines with 50 million stitches for upcyclers? I don't know, I don't use most of them, so let's do it. This is the Janome 1522DG, and this is the Brother Strong and Tough ST371HD. They just vary slightly, and this is going to be a little bit different if you have a computerized sewing machine, but the labels for the stitches are very similar across the board. So once you know how to identify the label that's on the sewing machine, you'll know what stitch to go to. So let's start with the most basic stitch in the free world, the straight stitch. On the Janome, right up here on the top, you can see what type of stitches you have to choose from. Typically for most sewing machines across the board, the straight stitch is going to be the either first or second stitch. A lot of sewing machines have the buttonhole stitch as the very, very first stitch and the straight stitch as the second one. But either way, this is what the symbol for a straight stitch looks like. On some sewing machines like the Janome, you have a couple of straight stitches to choose from. For this one, the regular straight stitch is straight stitch A, where the stitch runs right down the middle um, in between the foot. Now there is another stitch B and sometimes another one C where the needle will be off to one side. The basic things you need to know when sewing a straight stitch is your stitch length. On the Janome, this is the stitch length now right here. And on the Brother, it's the one all the way to the right. Either way, the numbers range typically from one to four. Four being your longest stitch length and one being your shortest. And then typically your buttonhole is in there because those stitches are really, really close together. And then sometimes an SS, which means you're going to switch to other types of stitches. And that'll typically be your bottom row of stitches, the ones that I very rarely use. On the brother, there's a dial right here on the left that dictates the tension of the stitch. It regulates the bobbin thread and how tight that bobbin thread is. Depending on what you're sewing, you'll want your bobbin thread to be looser or tighter. And you can play around with that. Oftentimes, when you feel like your uh, bobbin thread is just loose and it's doing weird things, I find that loosening the tension of your uh, bobbin thread normally actually fixes the problem more than tightening it. But definitely grab a scrap of fabric and test that out and try it in a few different ways and see what works best for the different types of fabric that you're sewing. All right, next up is your zigzag stitch. And you can tell it is the next most used because it is right next to the straight stitch on most sewing machines. On the Janome, it's letter C, and then on the Brother, it is number three. When you're trying to make a zigzag stitch, you want to decide how wide you want the zigzags to be and how far apart you want them to be. Um, some sewing machines have it like really, really simple, uh, delineated like the brother right up on top. You can see that it has the zigzag line. So you can see it's, tell, it's asking you how wide do you want that zigzag to be? And then on the far right, it's asking you how far apart do you want the zigzags to be? On the Janome, the stitch width is right here. That's how wide you want the zigzag to be and then you have the stitch length which is how far apart and you can play around with those like I said always always if you're unsure take a piece of scrap fabric and sew on that first until you get that stitch just right the reason a zigzag stitch is going to be important for you is especially on stretch fabrics if you are going to upcycle t-shirts you're going to need that zigzag stitch a shallow one so it's going to have a very narrow stitch width that's stitch width is going to be uh, probably around size one. And then the stitch length is gonna be 
just like your normal stitch length. So 2.53, in between 2.5 and 3. And you're going to sew your t-shirts on that. And that allows your t-shirts to remain stretchy even after they're sewn. And hey, if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. I'm sharing all of my basic tips in this series, what stitches to use, what needles to use, what garments not to buy from the thrift store all the things that you need to know. So definitely hit that subscribe button. All right, back to the video. Another reason why your stitch length and stitch tension is really important when you're doing a straight stitch is because that's how you would do a basting stitch or a gathering stitch. <laughs> And I'll explain that really quickly because that's really important as well. It's just a straight stitch, but it is where the stitch length is as long as you could possibly make it. And then the tension is as loose as you can make it. And that allows you to be able to pull that thread and gather the material or with the same stitch, you could be just doing a basting stitch, which means that you are just putting a stitch in that allows you to keep the material together until you can do something else. Say for instance, you're sewing something and you're not sure if you're doing it right or you eventually want to take that seam out or if you're not sure if you're going to want to take it out, then definitely put a basting stitch first. Some people do it just to keep their zippers in place before they make the final stitch. So basic stitches are actually very important to sewing. So you definitely want to locate your stitch length and your stitch tension on your sewing machine. All right, next up, let's talk about an overlock stitch. An overlock stitch is what you can do on your sewing machine in order to help your seams not fray. And the reason you don't want your seams to fray is because if your seam starts to fray, specifically on something that's like not denim, um, the little strings will come out, it'll work its way towards your seam, and then your seam will open up. You'll be out in these streets with your whole thigh out. And <laughs> unless you intended for that to be, I'm sure that's not what you want. So that's the reason why we overlock our stitches or we finish the stitches. And I'm also going to do a basic upcycling skill video about how to keep things from fraying without a sewing machine. But today, let's talk about that overlock stitch. Brother number 23 is the overlock stitch. It can be a little bit confusing because a lot of sewing machines have something that looks like an overlock stitch, but it's not actually an overlock stitch. Reason why is because you want the zigzag part to be to the right because it has to be on that edge of the fabric to keep the fabric from fraying. And then you want the stitch part to be to the left. Now the Janome doesn't have the same type of overlock stitch as the Brother, but it does have a double overlock stitch. And what that means is that it has two lines and then a zigzag in the middle. They're done exactly the same. You're sewing right on the edge of your fabric. It's just that the other one has a stitch that kind of goes along the edge and holds that material so that it doesn't fray. Now, if your sewing machine does not have an overlock stitch, you are not out of luck you can definitely still overlock your stitches. All you have to do is sew a zigzag on the edge of your fabric and then sew a straight stitch next to it. It's, yes, it's double the work, but you don't have to get a new sewing machine. All right, lastly, let's talk about something that is very important and it is the back stitch. So this isn't actually a separate stitch. It's something that you do at the beginning and possibly in of your stitches, whatever it stitch it might be. You'll put a back stitch any place where you don't want that seam to come apart. There are some seams that are gonna be crossing over other seams eventually, and it won't really matter if they're back stitched or not. Or there might be some seams like a gathering stitch like we talked about earlier that you definitely don't want a back stitch. Any seam that you don't want to come apart, say for instance, you're sewing, you're taking in a top and you get to the bottom, the hem edge, and you don't want that to come apart, you're going to need a back stitch because over time, if you just do a straight stitch and you open it up, it is going to start to unravel. So you want to have that back stitch in order to keep that stitch together. And most back stitches are very easy to locate on sewing machines. It's normally this little knob right here. And once it's pressed down, 
it will go backwards. It'll take your sewing machine backwards and then you let it go to go forward again. And you can go back and forth as many times as you want. Typically a couple times is sufficient. All right, so I hope I made that super easy and super simple for you. Just stick to these basic stitches and you can do probably 95% of the projects that you wanna do. Let me know in the comments what other basic upcycling skills you wanna learn and I'll definitely try to make that happen. And definitely hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. And I definitely have other videos for you to watch right here as well as this series that's going on right now and some easy no-sew up cycles for you to start with. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!